O. Gather your chi, for it is three. Greetings, my beloved Japanites. Radies, gentlemen, niggers, niggerettes, foreigners. I, do, I just love saying foreign dogs in a Japanese accent. <laughs> a foreign dog! <laughs> you have an honor, foreigner. Oh, God. Griffo, I, Stabaru, like her and subscribe. You have an honor. Pay for painting. Oh. Griffo. I'm here, fearing like Joe Burden's brain. I reckon I'll get whatever wife he has. <laughs> well, I hope you feel better, brother Griffo. We all have our days where we feel shritery under the weather. I only had one there the other day. Felt like crap on Wednesday. Feel a bit crap today, uh, but uh, not, not as bad. I, um, I, had a, I had a decent night's sleep last night. Despite going to bed at like midnight, I need to stop doing that. Like, I need to stop going to bed late. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking mad late. Like, like I know. Like, for people like me who like used to stay up gaming until all hours of the fucking morning, midnight is like ah, like may as well be nine o'clock at night. Like, do you know. But like, it's it's called midnight. Do you know what I mean? The middle of the night, like. So I'm literally going to sleep in the middle of the night. Like, and then waking up at like fucking seven or eight. Like, what time did I wake up this morning? It was half eight. Like, oh, God. No, I must uh, not a yawn not on the painting. Right. <sighs> a, a quick sip to cleanse the parrot. Ah, oh, glorious agua. Could you imagine if... Uh, He's all found out that I was uh, secretly, su super secretly, just like constantly drinking vodka or moonshine or some shit like on the streams. Constantly saying how like, I, you know, well, not constantly, but like oh, every so often being like, you know, I used to drink on the streams. Like, you know, and I, I just like a fucking like, this is like well more than a pint. This is like half a liter. Like, do you imagine if I fuck and I nearly finished this every stream, like most streams, I'm like chugging the water out of it, like <laughs> between singing and talking shit, like. Do you imagine if I like that was full of like moonshine or vodka or some shit like or even like clear like white rum or something like anything like to like it could be like four percent and they'd be fucking like blazed by the industry like oh god ah oh, Desmondu to <laughs> Oh my god, a painting goo? <laughs> the idea, the idea of like some young one being like, oh my god, I fucking love painting. Like proper like scumbag Dublin, like, oh my god, I fucking love painting goo. <laughs> I just can't get enough of painting goo, I fucking love it. <laughs> oh, which reminds me. Oh. I must uh, descend to proper painting go posture. Excellent. I am now rever with the goo. And I am also closer to the mica. Let me know if you notice, but I have increased the saturation on the picture. So the colors are a little bit more vibrant and the Dark spots are not as dark. Although, we basically still just have a silhouette of a crow and a bear <laughs> in front of the, in front of the, the glowing map <laughs> that like has insane glare coming off. I need to, I need to get a black map. <laughs> like, I need to get a black map of the realm. <laughs> oh, it is glorious though. The heavenly right. Of heaven. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. The heavenly right of heaven. <laughs> we are blessed with the glorious right of heaven. 
shines brightly upon my beard this day. How are you all? Are you all well? Are you all well? I shall pray for swift recovery for you, Griffo. San from what gaiety you have acquired. Indeed, from time to time we are all afflicted with the gay, and we must pay it away. Either to the big bear himself, here on painting you, which kind of just is, at least with the t-shirts anyway. Like, I want to do more stuff like that. I know the t-shirts is a bit of a, uh, Carl Brown's <laughs> I I I will read I'll read that out in a sec. Give me a minute. Man, two like two acre like fucking two acres like got a fucking IV drip of honor. Like the last fucking two or three weeks, like just like almost every stream, boom. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I want I want to do like I I would love to get myself into a position where like uh any merch I bring out. Um, a portion of it goes to like Bertaria Ozarks or like Owen or something like you know, um, I'd I'd love to do that like you know, uh, say if like you know if if I do start promoting painting a bit more or whatever or if I uh, write another letter to uh, to Owen, and I'm like, stop big nigga. Uh, so look, I've been um fucking you know in my own little corner of the internet entertaining about twenty bears every day for the past year. <laughs> And I've kept my head down because I don't want to stress you the fuck out. <laughs> I like I can imagine I I can imagine if I write it like if I word it like well, it'll make him laugh and it'll like come across as like endearing and stuff. But like if I worded it poorly, it'd probably come across as like I don't know like like I'm just I feel like sometimes when uh, similar to Owen, like sometimes you try to be like straight up and honest, and you come across you, you come across like either like arrogant or ignorant or insulting or something and then you have to explain your position and shit like like i i honestly thought that uh someone would like get word to him uh or like somebody who'd like wanted me to fucking fail at this or some shit would uh would be like he's using sidekick bear on his stream like do you know what i mean he's like taking the piss out of you and stuff like but n nobody nobody said shit like at least i didn't think i, I don't think they did because it's not like he's ever mentioned me I like, like, I like my current position, you know? I'm not interested in growth right now. What I'm interested in is stability. Um, and I just want things to go well, like, do you know what I mean? Like the t-shirts with pr uh, Printer Bear, there's a, there's a lot of uh, concern with the costs and stuff like that. And, like, uh, he's going to have to send me the bulk order of everyone that everyone in Ireland that wants a, t a painting go t-shirt he's going to send them all to me and then I'm going to redistribute them here so there's just like logistical technicalities like but it's hilarious talking to printer bear like seriously like uh, props to printer bear he's so cool about everything um so laid back uh, like myself um he's kind of just like yeah well like you know we'll we'll do it and we'll see what happens like I turned around to him and I was like I'm sorry I'm so kind of, like, retarded about all this when it comes to business. Like, I just... I, you probably noticed by now that I literally just wing everything. Like, do you know, like... Um, like, I can't imagine people would uh, think this, but, like, if, if some people did think that I, like, uh, script painting goo or I, like, you know, even plan anything for painting goo, like, they'd be wrong. I li Every day when I go to do painting goo, I literally unravel the fucking hundred meter long fucking <laughs> ethernet cable like <laughs> every time every time i think about the ethernet cable i think of ethernet gary <laughs> and i'm just like uh i think it'd be funny for like i think it'd be funny if we did like a skit or some shit where like uh ethernet gary turns around and he's like if the fucking if the fucking, like, lunatic Irish painter knows better than <laughs> to get a fucking Ethernet cable, you'd think you, with your 148 IQ, would fucking get an Ethernet cable. <laughs> like, um, but I'm, like, I'm a bit anal with that shit anyway, like, because uh, I'm a gamer, you know? I can't stand, like, lag and frame rate drops and stuff like that, like... Uh, so that's why, that's why I got it, like... But I completely understand where Owen's coming from, where it's like, dude, I'm not fucking... 
like I fucking stream out of my barn for fuck's sake I'm not like threading an Ethernet cable fucking 200 feet over to my barn like fuck that shit like um, but I literally have my internet in the other fucking room you know so which makes it even funnier that I have like an insanely long Ethernet cable like my if I sent my Ethernet cable to Owen it would probably reach from his house to his barn <laughs> Oh, shit just makes me laugh. I am. I know. I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a functioning mess. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I am literally the, like, I think this is why I got along so well with Juju. Um, when we visited her, visited her, visited her in France. That, like, uh, I just, I just get up every day and I'm just like, right, like, let's fucking do this shit. Like, and I just like go about my business and I don't really plan. Like, I do plan some things, you know, uh, obviously it does require like life in general does require some sort of like order or some shit like, but in general, yeah, like I'm, I'm similar to Owen in the sense that like, I'm just constantly in a flow state where I'm just like, just, I'm just going and going and going and going. And, uh, yeah, the, the double edged sword effect of like, it leads to burnout it leads to like uh, it, you saying some things that people are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, like, uh, like it's it leads to me saying some things that I'm like, "What the fuck?" Like when I, what was it yesterday? Yeah, it was, it was yesterday, and like a couple of streams ago, where I was like, "I would just kidnap all the women and children and then fucking glass the place," and then I thought about the logistics of it, and I was like, "Do you imagine the logistics of trying to kidnap every woman and child in a nation and like?" do it successfully while having the males like stay there <laughs> like like the logistics of that strategy are so poor <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like a monumentally impossible task to go into a nation and kidnap all the women and children and somehow keep all the men there <laughs> and then glass the place <laughs> I was thinking about the actual, like, how you would actually try and pull that off. And I was like, yeah, that's like, that's, that's no way you're doing that. Like, but that's how I feel, you know. Um, but anyway, we have a beautiful patronage from Carl Brown's ghost. R.I.P. Carl Brown. He was a man of many tyrants. A true brack man. Not a nigger. A brack man. Ah... You have brought much honour to your nummery drunken countrymen by painting with honour and not pissing on yourself. Ah, but how do you know? You can only ever see me from above the waist. How do you know I'm not constantly sitting in the puddle of my own piss? A pudre of my own piss, eh? You don't know this. You will never know, because I will never tilt the laptop down. <laughs> like, I <laughs> say... I think I said that before. How funny would it be if, like, you felt like some Reddit troll managed to like angle the camera down or some shit, and it turned out that I was like, I was I was sitting here in fucking like no it like no underwear, no nothing, fucking cocks just hanging out with the kimono and all. <laughs> like I I'm that much of a mess. I'm like Robert Downey Jr. level mess. Like <laughs> I was just like 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 pull myself out of the bed at around 1 p.m. and just like stroll into this room bollock naked and just put the kimono and headband on <laughs> and just plunk my ass here like oh god uh hair defender do not hair me worship me <laughs> you cannot hair a demigod you must have worship a demigod oh god Yankee Devil Doggo. You are. You are Lish? We just assume. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what does that word even mean? You are Irish! We just assume it is Moonshine. But, like, it wouldn't be Moonshine, would it? It'd be fucking, like, Putchin or, like, uh... and I know Putchin is essentially our version of Moonshine. But, like, if it's Irish, it's stronger, you know? Like, it's just how it is. You can take anything in the whole realm, and then if you get an Irish version of it, it is probably far too potent. <laughs> you know, like we make our cologne out of potatoes and fox bollocks. <laughs> like, um, 
I have to get out of Rora Bredu Canadu. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like two acres dead right. Yes, <laughs> indeed. You have to escape Canadu. You must escape Canadu. A that fuck like I, like the price of fuck like sixty dollars. What did it go up to like eighty five or something when you did the exchange rate? Like for a fucking painting goo T shirt. Jesus Christ! Like the, it's stuff like that where I'm like, part of me wishes that uh, well, not wishes. Part of me thinks. That um, despite the fact that I really don't want to, because I know you guys enjoy the stream and I and I enjoy doing it, uh, part of me thinks of like rolling back on the painting goo and only doing it like a few times a week or even fucking an hour a few times a week or some shit like that, like and then uh, just cracking on with my symmetricals and my character designs and getting the money together to get my own fucking printing uh, equipment so I could just do them myself, like. And then I've also I've also thought about uh. Like, there's ways around things, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm I, ref I I'm not one of these guys who's like, oh, I don't have a choice but to do this. It's like, no, you always have a choice. There's always another way, you know? I mean, like, uh, proving how creative you really are is, uh, you know, finding a way around things. Like, And um, I've often thought that it might be a good idea because you can get these things. Uh, the company that does this stuff, I really like this company. It's a they're, they're, uh, uh, French company. Pebble. Pepeo, PBO, um, really good paints, really really good shit. Like, but I I uh, mistakenly bought uh, three little tubs of this stuff called Setacolor from that brand, uh, like two years ago or something. And when I got them, I was like, oh, these are nice and liquid, but they're very opaque. Um, I wonder what these are going to be like. But then I was reading the little, like, I was reading the instructions on the on the tub that they came in, and. Uh, it's for fabric painting. So part of me was like, oh, fuck, I'm after buying the wrong shit. Like, you know, but then another part of me was like, oh, that's interesting. So I can just freehand paint that stuff onto fabric and then iron it in and boom, there's a custom T-shirt. Now, obviously, the problem therein lies that uh, every T-shirt would be slightly different. Um, even if like, you know, even if I t really took my time and did like a chalk outline and stuff or a fucking... A template or whatever um there would still be slight like minuscule variations per t-shirt but i think that's kind of the thing that this community and the larger popu uh, populace uh, um is at least getting to now it, like people appreciate uh authenticity and uh uh originality and like real stuff you know so i might uh if the depending on how the painting goo t-shirts go over the next few weeks getting the orders in, getting them to people, and if it costs too much and stuff like that, um, I might look into that because uh, I've had that idea, but I just haven't like followed followed up on it because um, I've got so much shit going on. You know, I've got commissions, I've got my own symmetrical designs that I want to do that like they're the things that net me the most money in, in, a, in one single purchase. And then I have character designs and stuff. And then, like I said, on the last stream, I could go back to doing uh, profile pictures for people or some shit. Like, it's, the options are literally really endless. Um, but I think that might actually be a good uh, a good avenue to go down where I could potentially just buy myself a bulk, bulk load of t-shirts. Um, or even, like, what I, what I might do is, like, I'll do a mock-up of a design. And then ask everybody what size and color they want. And then, like, order the T-shirts myself, whatever. And then just put them on some kind of platform or stretcher or board or panel or something. And uh, and then just paint them by hand, you know? Um, I'm not stopping the merch endeavors, don't worry. I'm not, like, you know, I wouldn't let a Canadian change my ways. Um, but, I like, I am, I'm reassessing. And it's not just because of you, you know, like, because I looked at the fucking costs and stuff like that for you in particular. I mean, $85 is insane, even if it is Canadian dollars. Um, you may as well be fucking Nigerian. Uh, <laughs> like, the, uh, what, like, what I want is, I've said this from the beginning, even when, even with my symmetricals. People have turned around to me and looked at some of my symmetricals and been like, what, the, like, you're not charging enough money for them. They're, like, fucking incredible looking, like, you know. And uh, I don't, I, I don't want, I, I want to be an artist that people can afford to buy my art. So I always want people to be able to, like, you know, 
that's why I did the stickers and stuff on Teespring. It's like, look, if you literally can only spare a fiver, but you really want to support me and you like what I do, then I want you to be able to buy something. So there'd be, there's always going to be things that are like dirt cheap. And then there's always going to be things that are like, hopefully someday, like fairly expensive, you know. Um, but I don't want to be one of these, like, because I see a lot of that stuff uh, where like, you look at somebody's painting and you're like, don't get me wrong, that's good, but it's not worth three and a half grand. I don't care how much, I don't care how long it took you to do that. Like, even if it takes you 45 hours to complete a painting, if the finished product is okay or pretty good, you shouldn't be slapping a price tag like that on it. Like, you know, um, I believe in like being honest with yourself as an independent creator or designer or something. And it's like, what do you genuinely think you should charge people for this? Like, and it can be a, a it can be a stressful endeavor to uh, make sure that you're still making enough money to actually make a living off it. But at the same time, you're not pricing your audience out, you know, because that's the last thing I want to do is fucking put stuff out and be like, yeah, look, I really like your T-shirts, but I'm not paying $85 for them. Like, do you know, it's like I wouldn't either. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like. I want people to be able to buy painting coup t-shirts for like $30 or something like, you know, and like, like including postage and packaging, like, you know, like I want you to be able to just spend like 25 quid, 30 quid or something on a t-shirt. Like, you know, if you want to buy a symmetrical, depending on how big it is or depending on how intricate and beautiful looking it is, like, you know, if I did a massive canvas, that's like fucking, you know, six foot by six foot and I did a huge thing. Yeah. I charge a few grand for that. Like, you know, um, but like this one here, like this, this is still one of my favorite ones. I've shown it on the stream a few times and there's like multiple reasons why this one's my, one of my favorite ones. Like that's sick looking, you know? And like, I didn't even design it like that. I, I, I had a much more complicated version. And then a former bear was like, oh, you should just do a black and red one. And I was like, yeah, okay. And I did this and I was like, damn, that's like really, that's really cool. I have a tendency to do that. I have a tendency to like overcomplicate things. Um, well, you can turn it upside down, you know, so it's angry or uh, I don't know, kind of sad. <laughs> but um, I can't even remember what price I put on that one, to be honest, but it's only a couple of hundred quid. Like, you know, it's not uh, it's not like I'm trying to sell that for like fucking five, six hundred or some shit. Like, I don't I, like I look at stuff like that and I'm like, what would I pay for it? You know, and I'd pay a couple of hundred quid for that because it's fucking sick looking. Um, or the pink thing I have over there, fucking hold on, I grab this. Like I always like showing this one off because it's so pink. Defender ass. Oh Jesus! Have to be careful not to break the fucking thing now. But yeah, like look, like when I put it up, like. When I put it on screen and all, it has that like luminous fucking vibe to it and shit. It's like ser it's like fluorescent pink. It's one of my favorite ones that I've done so far. Fluorescent pink and matte black, you know. And all it is is like a fucking symmetrical image. Like it's not like it's, it's not like it's a fucking you know dragon, you know, fucking, uh, bombarding a castle full of soldiers. Like it's not like a fucking epic oil painting or some shit. But they're very applicable, like, you know, like I could like they're very they're actually quite contemporary in the sense that like uh, females like them. Do you know what I mean? I like I've noticed that as a as a uh, a reliable metric with my art is like if the female looks at something and she's like, oh, I really like that. I'm like, mm, that'll probably sell them. And then there's like other things that uh, like the symmetrical that I sold for 450 to that guy in France. He was like, I'll take that. That's really cool looking, like, you know. And it was. It was really cool looking. It was kind of floral and had flames, but then there was, like, tech looking lines around it and shit, like, um, real contrasting colors and stuff, like. And I remember, I like, I was doing that, and even though it was, like, far more complicated and, like, bigger and all, all sorts of things, like, the female was like, yeah, I like it, you know, but you've done cooler stuff. And uh, there's... <laughs> It's funny, there's one in the sitting room that I called Wildcat. Um, it's like lilac. Um, is it lilac? No, it's violet. It's violet purple. And 
aqua green and white. So ha- it's a vertical one and half of it is white and the other half of it is aqua green. And the symmetrical image that goes over both colors is violet. And it's pretty, it's pretty fucking cool looking. But uh, <laughs> the female didn't want to put it up on Etsy because... <laughs> Like, I was like, I was like, will you put like put all them up on Etsy? Like, put the I'll put the red and black one up on Etsy. And she was like, well, we don't have to sell the ones we like. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I just think I think it's so funny how like, you know, sometimes I'm like pure stressed out and shit. Where I'm like, I, I have to make money. I have to, you know, I have to provide for my female and stuff like that. And then there's moments like that where she's like. Well, we don't, we don't have to sell the ones we like, you know. And I'm like, I'm like fucking, what? Make your mind up. I'm, am I, am I doing this to make money or am I doing this to make beautiful art, like you know? And then the truth is, it's both. Uh, but shit like that makes me laugh. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, two times painting. Oh yeah, you're not listening to me at two X, are you? That'd be fucking ridiculous. So. <laughs> Painting you, painting me, it's painting you. <laughs> uh, that red one would make a boss t-shirt print. It's on a t-shirt. It's the first t-shirt I ever made. Uh, if you go to Teespring, it's uh, it's called the Abstract T. Um, although I don't I don't know if uh, I don't know what the quality's like because one of the bears bought it when it first came out. The grey one. It was grey with that one on it, um, and it was very latexy. Because of the way, you know, the way some, some, it depends, right? So with Teespring, it's like, if you buy it in Europe, it's going to have that plasticky finish to it, where it's been like a uh, heat, heat transferred onto the thing. Um, and I'm not a real big fan of that stuff. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you, they still look cool and all, but I don't, I don't like how those t-shirts feel personally. So I much prefer it when it's like, uh, dyed into the ink, you know? Yeah, like, or dyed into the ink. Like, I, when it's, like, ink into the fabric. You know, when it's actually dyed into the thing. Um, I much prefer that one. And it seems like when they ship to America, uh, that's what they do. Because I actually purchased one of my uh, first hoodie designs with the little blue guy with the demon horns. And the halo. Uh, Hugh. I, I, put him on a, I put him on a white hoodie with, uh, you know, the, the hoodies that have pouches. Um, on the belly, it was like my fit. I love hoodies like that. Like when I go buy a hoodie, I always want to, I always want a hoodie, um, that has like a the fucking little kangaroo pouch thing. I just love them. Um, and I put him on that like in the center, and it was white, and he's like, you know, kind of a baby. Uh, he's like a baby blue and hot pink, and uh, re- really cool contrasting colors. Um, and I ordered that one from the states. And it came the way I like, where it's like actually ink pressed into the fabric. But the T-shirt with the black and red thing uh, that showed up as like a latexy uh, heat transfer. So it depends, you know. But it's all like it's it's like anything, like you know what I mean. It's like me designing the turtles. Like I fucking had to redraw the grenadier turtle like fucking four times in the past twenty four hours because I was just not satisfied with it. Like, uh, but I'll give you a sneak peek. I have to put a second layer of color on them. But uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of the Grenadier. Defender ass! Um, I was satisfied enough with this sketch, so I started to put colour to him. Um, so there he is, with his little, uh, his uh, thumper grenade launcher. You can see, you can tell when I when you look closer that I tried to include the uh, the hinge, and the line. You can see the line where it, it uh, opens as a breach, but I wanted to give it like that kind of uh, uh, shotgun handle style. N- not that it's a pump, but it's like you know, it's just better grip on the thing. Like, um, but yeah, he's got a breech loader, forty mil. Then he's got his forty mil shells uh, strapped to his belly. And then he's got his red bandana. Um, but I have to, I have to do, I have to do another layer of color on him to shade the bandana, redo the shell, um, the rim of the shell, shade his belly, and his arms and legs and his head and stuff like that. And then, and then he'll be ready to go because I'm satisfied enough with that. And then um, after him, I think I'm gonna do the sniper one. And then that, so there's, was it six? I decided on six. 
So what I, what I depending on the painting goo t-shirt situation and how it goes over the next few weeks. Um, and again, shout out to Printer Bear because he's being so cool about all this. Like, it's like the two of us are just like, yeah, fuck it, we'll figure it out. Like you know, and I, I love that energy. That's one of the reasons I love the bear community because it's like, look, it doesn't matter like what obstacles we come across and shit. Like we'll just we'll we'll get there. You know, we'll we'll just keep just keep fucking doing it. Like, um. So depending on how, how all that pans out with the painting goo t-shirts, um, what I might actually uh, do, well, I suppose I wouldn't be able to afford it right now, because then I'd have to, I'd, ha I'd have to purchase the fabric paints, and they're quite expensive. I only have black, pastel pink, and burnt sienna, so. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that now, but like you know, like I'm, I, I think I might actually uh, work towards doing something like that, and I'll see how that goes. Uh, with uh, I'll get, I'll slowly but surely build up a a little uh, palette of uh, they're called seta colors, which makes sense because you can set them in place with, when you iron them. Um, but I'm, I might, I might do that over the next year or two or something. Like I'll slowly because they're they are they're small vials, but they're fairly expensive. And um, the good shit always is. So I'll uh, I'll get a palette of them together of all the colors I need, and uh, I'd say the f I'd say the first thing that I probably should do if I was going to freehand paint my own merch is uh, I'll go back and I'll redo the Gunduk hoodie, and um, that'd be pretty cool if I could freehand paint some of them or some shit like. And uh, <clears throat> see what the crack is with that. But anyway. Enough, enough talk of merchandise and logistical issues. We are here to pay. Whoop. <coughs> oh. Glorious Gepu. Right. As I was saying, we are here to painting. So let us begin. Um, Iron Man Baru, welcome to painting. Looks like Big Rig Hood. Black Dog. Big Rig Big Rig Hood? What, like a fucking... Oh, you mean like the grill? Yeah, like the, the grill on like a big truck or some shit, like... Because I, I can see that, like... I think it looks like a pig. Hold on, I'll get it back up there. Um... You could probably, you could probably, like, you'll probably see it when I point it out. You see the nose, that like, the kind of nose part in the middle? I, th I think it looks like a little kind of pig nose or something like <laughs> But yeah, it's it's one of my more, it's, uh, it's one of the ones I'm a bit more prouder of, because I just, um, it's clean, you know? And it's, like, simple, but complicated, because there's, like, some different patterns and stuff in it, like... Like you should see the fucking uh, the one that I designed was like far more uh, far more intricate. It had like a like a gold um, section that was like a very thin line of gold just going over the top of it and stuff. It had green parts on it. It was much more shamanistic looking and like tribal and stuff. Um, I was really satisfied with how that one came out. And like the the orange and black one that I have on the wall over there, I'm not fucking, I'm not getting up again to grab that one. The orange and black one I did, uh, Blazebug. I think I have that sitting in the files. Actually, I could probably share that one, so you guys know what I'm on about. Um, but there's like, hold on, I'll share my screen while I do this. It'll just be easier. Screen capture, activate, and then we go back into folders. Right, so check this shit out, okay? So, like, here's, an, here, here's another symmetrical that I did ages ago that I still... I, I was going to put this on hoodies and T-shirts and stuff. I think that would go well on... Uh... Do you know what? That like that That's the type of thing that would go really well on a um, on the gas tank of a bike for, like, people like you, Stabaroo. I think that would look sick if you could get that on, like, just your... on the gas tank or something, like... Or maybe uh, you know one on either side of the the fa the fairings, the side panels, the uh, the fiberglass side panels on some bikes or some shit like that. Like, and that, like that's that is really my like my bread and butter is doing these things. 
Like, I really like how this one came out. That's one of my favorite ones as well. This kind of abstract robot, like, what did I call that one? Simitron. So this this one's called Simitron. And then I can't remember. I don't think I, like, sometimes I'll name them because I think of naming them. And then sometimes I don't. I'm like, I, I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, here's Hugh. This is Hugh, for anyone who hasn't noticed or paid attention. Um, and he he's the one I have on a hoodie. And he's one of my first, like, uh, kind of cute characters that I came up with. And uh, I have a whole, like, I have a whole little, like, uh, idea for him. Why, the idea I had for this guy was, like, I'd do little animated shorts or get someone to help me. Like, I'd, you know, uh, storyboard them and, like, do the drawings or something and then they could animate it. And the story behind Hugh is he is a demon. He's he's a baby demon. And he, he chooses uh, to try be good. And he's, like, uh, basically sequestered through some kind of means. <laughs> you know, maybe he stole it or k- killed an angel for it. I don't know. But he gets his hand on a halo. And then, like, ties it to a bit of string. And he's always, like, carrying... He's always carrying around the halo because he's trying to hold on. He's trying to be good. He's trying to... Um, he's trying to be moral and stuff like that. Like, And it is. It's kind of like an expression of, like, my internal struggle. Where it's, like... I feel... And I have felt throughout my life that, like... I'm supposed to be a bad guy, but I don't want to be kind of thing. <laughs> you know? Some kind of, like, psychological internal conflict thing. But I think everybody has that. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like the the line of good and evil travels down every man's heart and all that stuff. Like, and here was my idea of like trying to uh, do a cute, uh, funny, moral, uh, short cartoon thing that even kids could watch, where he would do very simple things. Like he would try to uh, he would try to pot a plant that he's going to grow, and then he has to try and figure out. How he's going to you? How's how he's going to be able to pot the plant, which he needs two hands for, while still holding onto the halo? So there's moments where he he because it's on a string, he'll attach it to his wrist or he'll attach it to his horns. And uh, I remember coming up with a you know a, a little short bit where he would uh, th- he would lose the halo and it would start floating away from him, and you know there would be like. Uh, scary music playing like sad music playing like oh no he's gonna lose the halo for good like and the halo starts floating up away from him he has to like climb up a tree and catch it and all this stuff and all and i thought it would be like a really endearing thing um to like uh you know get people back get people thinking again of like you know the fundamentals of like what it is to be good and like try to be good and stuff um and that's like that's still something i'd love to do you know i would love to get into animation eventually but I've got so much going on at the moment that I need to focus on. Um, and then here's some of the old painting goos as well, actually. You guys remember this one? Remember this nigga? <laughs> Fuck it. This, this guy makes me laugh so fierce. The fucking the, the nigga in the cart with the banana and the purple afro. Look at his teeth. He's got the, he's got the whitest, but the most gammy looking teeth I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And that fucking, that black bear, like, is fucking demonic looking, like. And, like, some of the, the polar bear in the back is actually hilarious looking. Looks like something out of fucking Castle Crashers or some shit, like. Um, what was I saying, anyway? Yeah, I, originally I brought this up to look for, this is the wrong file. Art for merch, general art stuff. No, that's the same one. Alex artwork. No, it's the same shit. Telegram. No. Art for merch. That has much more of my stuff in it. Uh, see if we can find Blazebug. Blazebug is one of my favorites. It was one of my first ones. And funny enough, uh, somebody didn't buy it, but they wanted a cobalt blue version of it. So I ended up doing that. Um, let me see. I think it, it might be on the desktop. Oh, he's fucking showing his desktop live on the internet. Uh, there's oh yeah, and like here's here you know the the gun duck thing. Um, the gun duck hoodie I have is is another character as well. Like gun ducks are like a comic book idea that I've had for fucking years now. Um, which is like my own take on the Superman story, where like he's a a duck from another like a world where they're all ducks and stuff, and like he's like a prince of a 
a um, a royal duck family and uh, his cousin or his little brother like uh, essentially um engages in a coup and betrays them all and like blames this guy for everything so he gets like put in a capsule and sent to earth as punishment but instead of showing up on earth and uh, being adopted by humans uh, this guy shows up on earth and like goes on a killing rampage to to, to find out how to get home <laughs> so to, so he can go on a killing rampage at home <laughs> um let me see Gen no that's probably the same fucking thing i i could have sworn i had an image of uh blaze book here obviously i don't it doesn't matter and then there's the tactical turtle stuff those commandos are actually like uh actually that was a question i posed to myself there yesterday at some point i was like because i'm only going to do six of them you know because i think six is enough for one t-shirt so i'm trying to choose between do you guys do you guys want a radar one like this guy here do you think this uh, like a sonar armored turtle um do you think like you know do you prefer him or this fella i prefer this fella i think blind fire is fucking hilarious looking with his like bat helmet and 20 millimeter cannon fucking is there not a colored in version where's the colored in version do i not have a colored in version i must have, i must have colored in the ears afterwards yeah okay but yeah let me know what you think is better the fucking radar one or the 20 mil cannon one because i definitely want to do the spartan one i love the spartan one the idea that he has just like an rpg on the end of a stick and when he throws it like a spear and it like explodes on impact and then he just like summons another one <laughs> into his hand because he's got like the power of the gods <laughs> Like, fuck it. Like, one minute, like, everybody's going to be like, you know, oh, tactical turtles, this is really cool. Like, you know, they, all the all the turtles are based on military stuff and all. Like, and then you see the Spartan one and he's got, like, fuck it. Uh, he's got, like, straight up, like, magical powers. Like, you know, <laughs> like, I love, like, throwing stuff like that, like, you know, in, in what other stuff where, like, you have a combo of, like, semi-realistic shit and it's, like, partnered with, like, totally outlandish mad shit, like. Um, you would do well with pinstriping Defender of Sun. Yeah, that's why I started getting uh, sign writing brushes and stuff. I love, I fucking love it. Like, uh, um, I probably would be a a decent pinstriper, but like, that's like that. Like, if you're a pinstriper, that's like all you do, you know. Um, and like, then you need to be like, you you be doing it on panels and people's cars and stuff like that. Like, um. But yeah, like I, I, that is something. Like, I, there's a lot of pinstripers I, I follow on Instagram because I do love that stuff. Like I've said multiple times in the stream before, there's something incredibly satisfying about getting a liquid medium like paint, and then a brush, and then creating a straight line with a liquid medium, and then you know, like watching it flow across you know a panel or some shit like that it's there's just something incredibly satisfying about it but i i experience this that same satisfaction when i'm doing the uh the black line drawing it's usually like they call it inking because generally you'll do that you'll do a sketch of a character and then you'll ink them but what i do is i use black gouache or uh black watercolor because ink is like there's no going back you know once you've inked it you've inked it and that's the fucking end of it so if you fuck up you like you know you can potentially destroy your uh, project um i think it was like is the artist like i can't remember his name is alex ross or something there's a guy who does like incredible marvel paintings um and he was like yeah i don't use ink i use black gouache um because you can lift it if you, you, there's there's a time frame where it doesn't it hasn't like totally dried yet where if you don't like what you've done or if you think you've made a mistake or whatever or if you like you know god forbid fucking spill a load about all over your project or some shit there's a time frame where you can just spray water on it or apply water to it and lift it off the the paper as long as you have a uh, as long as you're not working with like really low uh, grade like a uh, thin paper that will just like fall apart like um Brack Dog was Patrick Swayze movie. Do you know? I want to go back and watch the old Roadhouse before I, because uh, I do want to watch the new Roadhouse with Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, I've seen a lot of people saying that it's like oh, or trash and all this stuff, but like I watched the trailer and I was like, 
it looks like a bit of a laugh. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're not supposed to take a film like that seriously. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, The Old Roadhouse is a fucking mad movie. Like, you know, fucking Sam Elliott, Patrick Swayze. I can't remember anyone else's fucking uh, the characters and stuff. Like, the sex scene in that is hilarious. <laughs> Do you know, like, was that is is Roadhouse an eighties movie or a seventies movie? I'm not sure, but man, like some of the like, I remember one of the sex scenes in fucking uh, there was a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. I think it was Double Impact, and oh my god, what a like one of the sex scenes in it. Like Van Van Damme is like one of those dudes that when you were watching his movies and there was like a sex scene with females, like it it was hilarious. Like some of the shit that was said and some of like the music and all, it was like they straight up like inserted like uh, uh, a short porn, you know, like into, into action movies. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's a, that's what like Roadhouse and like some of the Van Damme movies and all did. Like, you know, it was like action, 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 story, 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 action, porn for like three minutes you know like and then just like okay back to the action like you didn't get to see like there was no penetration or anything because they always like covered the angles and stuff like and sometimes you didn't even see a nipple but like they were always both bollock naked and there was like some kind of like you know like fucking saxophones and shit like and like when I when I remember or I see shit like that I get like I just start pissing myself laughing because I'm like how did they think that was like a good idea to put in movies like but fuck it like you know fucking like some of the sh- some of the shit that has been on TV screens is just wild um do you want me to you want me to put shades on one of the turtles is that what you're saying Griff I rest with shades. Dick Fordu, welcome home. Ooh, bang, tingu. Uh, or the top of a Christmas tree. What the fu- the the black and red one? Yeah, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, there's a section of the black and red one that totally looks like the top half of a Christmas tree. You're dead right. Like, do you know, like, that's actually one of the reasons why I like got kind of obsessed with doing symmetrical images. Uh. Or like abstract symmetrical images is because people see different shit in them, um, kind of like a Rorschach. It's like it, like a, somebody said that to me before. It was like you basically make your own Rorschachs, like you know, which is funny because it's like again like a, a a weird manifestation and representation of my own like mental you know shit, which is exactly what I got the female to put on the new Etsy Roaches Realm and uh, Facebook Roaches Realm stuff. It's like. Join me as I uh, scour the inside of my mind, <laughs> like, because you know? that's that is essentially what I want to do. Like, I I grew up with cartoons and I grew up with movies and video games and stuff like that. And in the past fifteen years, I've seen it all going to shit. Um, so what I would love to do is like you know collab with people uh, eventually, like uh, people like Vox or something. Like you know that would be an incredible honor. And create comic books and movies and animations and video games and board games and card games and like all these things like Yu-Gi-Oh or something like, but with a fo- a moral foundation, you know, a clearly defined. These are the good guys. These are the bad guys. These. This is why these are the good guys and this is why these are the bad guys. And uh, and like I said uh, a few streams ago, there's um, I already have the idea for the. Uh, the guys that the, the the tactical turtles will be fighting and yous, yous are gonna fucking love it um i love it i fucking i think they're they're like they're just like the turtles in the sense that they're q but they're also lethal and dangerous um defo would be awesome on the bike yeah like like there's a most of my symmetricals you could apply to like the bonnet of a car or the top of a car um or the or, or the ga- the gas tank on a bike or something like that um because like i actually had like a family member of mine asked me to design her a, sym- a tribal symmetrical image that she would then get on the car um i don't think i don't think she ever actually fucking followed through on it despite the fact that i actually did design it for her but uh shit happens but like yeah it's like that's one of the reasons why I've tried to keep up with the symmetrical designs is because like i said that is like my bread and butter that's what started me um off getting like 
good money. Like, there was a guy in the first year that bought three of them off me, I think, two or three of them for like 185, 250 quid a pop, you know. And uh, and then the, the, that yellow and black one that I really like, he uh, he was like, it's really cool, but can you do it in blue? You know, and like, I love shit like that. Like, I love shit being uh, like, I'll do something and then people are like, oh, that's awesome. But can you do this with it? And I'm like, I'll I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you know, like, um, are you working? Are you working, Corberu? Roadhouse was 1989. That was the formula. All right. Ugh. <laughs> the, 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 the Jewish formula. I don't know. <laughs> I may have to retract that comment, but jeez Louise, moviegoers did buy it. Like, <laughs> it's so true though. It was it was the it's it was like the formula. You're dead right. It was like the formula for creating an action movie. It was like right, we're gonna start off with a basic premise. This is the good guy. These are the bad guys. He's he's gonna be killing these bad guys for the you know. Uh, this is the main guy. These are the henchmen. You know, and uh, and then about 10, 15 minutes in, they introduced the the love interest, and I was like, okay, so that's the bitch he's gonna have a sex scene with at like some point in the movie, <laughs> you know, like, and then the sex scene comes, and it was always the same thing. It was always like, you know, like, <laughs> like just like porn, like you know what I mean? Like, it's, they basically just like slapped three minutes of soft core to like medium core porn in action movies like you know and when i go back and like think of stuff because like it's been a while since i actually went back and watched uh movies like that um and some of them are great like you know despite that stuff like you know some of them still were very entertaining like i only uh yesterday i was thinking about the movie uh if you've never seen the movie hard target with john claude van damme uh watch it i don't i don't think there's a sex scene in that i could be wrong I'm working off of memory. I can't remember. But I don't think there's actually a sex scene in Hard Target. But Hard Target is a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. And it's fucking excellent. Uh, the premise is, is that like there's this like um, fucking millionaire who is big. In, he's a, a big uh, game hunting millionaire. And he's gotten to the stage where uh, he wants to hunt humans because he's like he's hunted everything. So now he wants to hunt people. And he's hunting, uh, he, he pays homeless people and former veterans. Um, he uses like homeless shelters and stuff like that to uh, to pick up these people who, you know, are desperate enough to take like 10, 15, 25 grand or like whatever. And he tells them that they're going to be doing, you know, something. And then at the last minute, they find out that they're going to be strapped with very basic supplies and told to run that way uh, and that they get a fucking you know half an hour to an hour head start before this guy and like 12 of his billionaire friends fucking hunt them down like an animal it was a fucking brilliant movie like it's really cool and the, the cartoon archer um has an episode you know that like harkens back to that and like you know uh, is essentially like a copy of that and stuff like it's fucking there's some really good ones like like what's an what's another excellent Van Damme movie like Double Dragon, uh like fucking Bloodsport, Kickboxer. He did some great movies, man. Like you know, and if anything, they are they're like, like a few of them were like marred by like uh, just fucking porn. Like <laughs> still great action movies though. Right, where's my tunes? Where's my tunes, bro? We have a yeti and Nazis to paint. Let's fucking do this. Where's my chance? There we go. <laughs> the last like six streams, the headphones have been way too loud, and <laughs> for once I couldn't hear it at all. <laughs> Allah loves wondrous variety. Yeah, well, sometimes I want things to be the same for a while, for fuck's sake, right? <laughs> the ever changing nature of our reality right now sometimes gets to me. <laughs> Sometimes I wish things were a bit more stable, but I am really good at going with the fro, so I shouldn't be complaining. Complaining too much. You can complain, you know, even as a male, you can complain, but not often. Complaining often turns you into a female. <laughs> right. I wear a squirt upon this parrot. To get the goo throwing. <gasps> I got.
got some brew on my finger -oo. How dare I? Here on Painting Goo, the only thing that's allowed to touch the goo is the bitches. <laughs> if you get goo on your finger, tis blasphemy. Where's my favorite bitch? Get this bitch wet to we dip her head gently into the bucket. Hair first. Swear her about the place. And prepare for you know what. Slap her about the place. She is now ready for the goo. that time of day. Your spiner knows its timer. For painting goo. Painting goo. Mm, painting goo. It's painting goo. Painting goo. Painting goo. Mm, painting goo. It's painting you! Painting you! Painting me! Boom, 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 boom. Painting you! Painting me! It's painting goo! It's fucking goo! Yo! We have a yeti to complete. So I'm actually gonna give him like a little green toenails to match his horns. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So we will get some yarrow. And then a teeny tiny bit of brew. <coughs> oh yeah! Glorious Gepu! That's all the water mixing with all the fucking coffee and <laughs> cigarettes and <laughs> uh, bacon and eggs earlier on. Huh? Yeah, bacon and eggs. <laughs> There's nothing quite like bacon and eggs. It's delicious. Okay. We have some green. Do his little, do his little toenails, his little fussy crawls. Painting goo, painting goo, painting goo, goo 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 goo. It's like a spider dancing on a violin. Do you imagine you were, like, really high in a jungle or some shit, and, like, you came across a spider, like, actually, like, playing music on his web, just, like, staring at you, playing this shit, like, just, like, the eight arms just, like, going all over the place, playing different tunes and stuff, like, and you're there, like, <laughs> you're, like, delirious from, like, being bitten by a, s a snake or some shit, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be, like, the worst, f like, simultaneously, the worst and best idea would be to, like, take a load of shrooms or acid or something and then just, like, stroll through a section of the Amazon, <laughs> like, just witnessing everything. <laughs> Which is funny because the title Hard Target sounds like a porn tar title, I know, like, Hard Target. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. I look like, I used to, like... Like, obviously, porn is degenerate and, like, destructive, and it's a horrible thing that shouldn't fucking exist at all. 
But some of the names of porn, like, movies or some shit, like, was some of the funniest fucking things I ever heard in my life. Like... Like, genuinely, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I remember reading some type, especially from, like, the 90s, like, do you know what I mean? Where they had, like, where they were still on, like, VHS and DVD and shit, like... You know? Just some of the titles, like... Especially the ones that were, like, parodies of, like, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or, like, you know, other movies, like... <laughs> like I, was, I, can't t I can't think of any right now, but, like, they're, like some of them were genuinely fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, laugh out loud, like, what the fuck, like... Okay, uh, kind of need to put some detail on that rope. Because it's annoying me. That it just Well, I suppose I could just, you know, end up putting a black outline on everything. Make it pop like a motherfucker. Uh, putting a black outline on all of that Yeti is going to be a fucking chore in its own right. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do... We'll set up the Nazis on the boat. That's what we'll do this time. Actually, do you know what? Before I do that... His eyes are screaming at me to uh, apprise some high rights. So one of the things I found utterly fascinating when I first started, like, really trying to take art seriously is, like, you know, they say, like, trust the process and stuff where, like, you'll, you'll do your basic structure, then you start applying color, and then you'll, like, you know, do, sh like, lo low lights and, well, not low lights and highlights, you do, like, different shades, you start, like, you know, going darker and going lighter in certain areas, but at the very last thing you do is do, like, the darkest parts and then the highlights. Um, and, like, how drastically different an image can appear when you put the smallest amount of white in like just one or two areas the entire image just like comes together as a whole um that happened uh big style when i was doing the hunter duck uh, hoodie the get ducked hoodie where he has like a little like it kind of looks like an air rifle or something <laughs> like gave him like a tiny rifle um but the when I was doing the rifle, I did like you know the low the the pale greys and then the dark greys and then I was doing the you know the inserts and stuff for like you know the, the really dark greys like under the clip and under the barrel and stuff like that. But it was only when I got the white out and I was like, okay, I'll put a dab of white there and I'll put a like, little bit of white there and another little bit of white like just on the end of the barrel or something like and and then. Once you do that, you're like, Jesus Christ, it lo genuinely looks 3D, like, you know? It's brilliant, like. <gasps> oh, God. Glorious Gepu. I would assume the mushrooms I ate were no good. <laughs> it's funny, like, painting goo. Uh, mm, painting goo. I. I, I drank a lot and I smoked a lot of weed and I did like, you know, a fair amount of ecstasy and I did some coke and stuff, but I never did heroin or like, uh, or acid or mushrooms or like, I never did any of the hallucinogenic stuff uh, because I, I was genuinely afraid. I was like, I'm fairly like imaginative and wild and very visual and stuff like that. Like, I can only fucking, Im like, that's a funny way to put it. I can only imagine. Um. God only fucking knows what I would have seen if I started tripping balls like shit. Like, I would have just been sitting there, eyes wide, just been like, uh, 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 like just like, incapacitated by my own imagination. Like, I know. I, I suppose they do say that it's not actually just in your imagination. It's like a different realm that you're experiencing, like painting goo. Uh, do you have that red symmetrical as a sticker to purchase? Want that on my bike? Uh, no, but I'll do it. I'll do it tonight. <clears throat> if I rem well, it's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it either tonight or sometime tomorrow. Uh, that'd be easy enough for me to um, just take the same image and pop it into sticker form. So I will do that for you, Stabberloo. 
One thing I used to do as a dumb teen at my friend's house was thumb through the TV guide on, the, on his cable TV and make fun of the names of pornos on the porno channels. <laughs> like, they were, they were genuinely funny. Like, that's another one of these, like, formulaic uh, things that they kind of did to, like, uh, normalize it, you know? Whereas, like, if because if something makes you laugh, you're more comfortable with it. Like, do you know what I mean? So, like, you'd read the title of the porn, <laughs> and you'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, like, and that immediately gets your guard down, you know? Which is fucking horrible, but it's true, like, you know? Some of the, some of the names of porn, uh, porn movies or shows or whatever, fuck, it's so funny, like. <laughs> right, I want to get a dark. I need to get some Nazi uniform grey going. Bit more brack. A ri a ritter bit. A ritter. Rit ray. R Man, little is so hard to say in Japu. Ritter! Ritter? Ritter-ay. ritter -er. <laughs> I kept saying Rickle. Okay, <laughs> 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 okay. Dokey. So, we put a dude, uh... Here on the mini gun. I don't know why this came into my mind, but I'm going to put one here sitting on this cannon. <laughs> Get ready to crap for painting, goo. Yes, everybody, crap for painting, goo. If you're not crapping for painting, goo, you have an honor. Crap yourself silly for painting goo. There will be much crapping for painting goo. Or I will fring my tiger at you. And no, that's not a sexual euphemism. <laughs> I will literally f fling a tiger at you. going to need some flesh color for the Nazis' faces. Recordings just Our recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana Greetings, Dana! So How are you? You four-eyed cunt! How I despise that female. Not really. <laughs> I'm only playing, Dana. You know I love you. <laughs> I just always think it's hilarious to, like, if I ever ran into that bitch in real life and she has no idea who I am. And I just walk up to her and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for everything I said. And then just her reaction, like, would just be fucking comedy gold. Oh, God. Paint, paint. Nazis. Paint, paint. Nazis. Paint, paint. 
Nazis. Paint, paint. Painting go, go, go. Paint, paint. Nazis. On a boat. Paint, paint. Painting go, go, go. I thought it'd be fairly difficult to make flesh color, but it's not. You fucking make flesh color like easier than other colors. That I thought would be easier to make than flesh color. Or as they say in Germany, Fleisch. <laughs> Fleisch is ham or something, isn't it? I can't remember. I always thought that was hilarious. Like Schinken. Or so, like I think shinken is like beef or ham or something, but it sounds like chicken. And then uh, I can't remember what it is for chicken though. But I remember I remember think that, thinking that was like just fucking hilarious. Where like the thing, the German thing for chicken sounded like ham, and the German thing for ham sounded like chicken or something. It was it was like backwards. So fucking funny. Painting, go, 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 go. You know, like a really like simple technique, um, rule or like just a technique in general that I uh, that I learned from watching a YouTube video that like genuinely really helped me um, in in multiple ways, especially with painting. Go actually in the odd angles, is like. If you ever try and paint, like, to, like, don't feel like you're restricted to just holding the paintbrush like this. You can quite often just hold it like this, and like do this stuff with it, and that like op it opens up like all sorts of angles. Paint, paint. When you hold the brush in a different way, paint, paint. Nazis. Paint, paint. Nazis. Paint, paint. I'm gonna give this guy like a fucking Chad chin. Paint, paint. Paint, paint. The chin of a Chad. I could put a window in here and stuff like that, but like U boats probably wouldn't have that shit, would they? Because they're fucking underwater and stuff. Obviously, they'd have like some window somewhere but it's not like they're gonna have a cockpit like a fucking fishing trawler or a yacht maybe i'm wrong i don't know let me know in the comments am i wrong i <laughs> like i've been uh, i've been uploading the painting goose streams to rumble for a while now I ha like I, I had to stop there um because sleep deprived bear was busy, so he wasn't able to put them on Telegram. Um, because if I want to download them from YouTube, I have to get premium. So I just haven't been like it's just not cost effective right now for me to do that. Like, so I've been waiting for him to do his nerdy stuff and like uh, rip it off the internet somehow, and then stick it on Telegram so that I can take it from Telegram and then put it on uh, Rumble. And I've been doing that for weeks now, and I'm actually getting like a few hits and a few watches and stuff. But almost, if not every single comment I get on my rumbles, uh, the the rumble videos that I upload, <laughs> are fucking like bot bot things that are like, love your stream, absolutely love your content. Your content's amazing. I am blah blah blah, and I can help you get your views up and like expand your audience and shit. And I'm just, I, I'll get notifications on my phone. It's like. Oh, you have a comment on your Rumble video. And I'm like, oh, deadly. And then I look at the username and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, it's just another bot. 
<sighs> like that's the, like I know I said this like the other day and stuff, but like stuff like that genuinely gets fucking exhausting after a while, because it uh, and it, it's horrible because it like it means that I'm like I'm like assuming that if somebody comments on my fucking content now that it's gonna be a fake ass bot thing and like i think that's horrible you know when you see like when you see a notification like as a content creator that like oh, somebody has commented on your thing it's like you, like you'd want to be enthusiastic about it like you know but now i'm like i can't be because i'll end up getting disappointed <laughs> and it's like like that's such a mind fuck like do you know what i mean you know you go through the trouble of like making content and then Uploading it and fucking like naming it and doing the thumbnails and giving it a title and a description and all this fucking shit And then within hours like you get an email and it's like oh somebody has commented on your thing And you're like oh deadly and then you look at it and it's like Another one? Another fucking bot like another fucking thing like We can help you get your views up like at what cost though? You know Does it require the searing of my sorrow? Probably Like, how fucked is that? That they, like, Instagram has that too. You have all these fucking uh, bot accounts and all these fucking. And, like, some of them probably aren't bots. Some of them are probably legit, but they just provide that service. But it's like, we will get you more views. We will inflate your numbers. We will get more attention on your stuff um, for, like, X price or whatever. And I'm like, how, how can you justify that even being a thing that exists? You know? Like, that. To me, like, that to me, that's what tells me that, the, like, when you go on the internet, you are, you are not actually on what people think is the internet, where the internet is this, like, vast thing that connects all these people via a network. What you're actually on is, like, a vast uh, maze of subcategories and... Um, algorithmically pigeonholed off you know sections that like n none of them are actually connected it's it's fucking weird like you know no i know there's like independent web uh independent there's like independent websites and stuff that like, like if you didn't know they existed then you just wouldn't know they existed like you know unless you went to like some kind of like index of the internet or some shit but all of this social media shit is such bollocks in terms of like you know Get yourself out there, get connected, fucking, you know, find some customers and all this fucking shit. And then, you, like, somebody like me who uploads, like, all the time, you know, like, when I was doing the painting goo shorts, I was doing a painting goo short every fucking day for weeks. And none of them were getting views. Not on Instagram, not on YouTube, nothing, you know? And it's like, how's that even possible? If you have, like, millions of people on YouTube, shouldn't, like, anything that anyone puts up at least get a couple of hundred views because i've looked at like there's i might even like no i won't i'm fucking i was gonna say i might put it up there but like, i found i found this young fella well he's not a young fella he looks like a middle-aged man um i found this guy a while ago um and he's clearly uh retarded he's clearly mentally not all there um you know, I don't know where you call it, like Asperger's or autism or so. But he's clearly afflicted with some kind of uh, mental limit, you know. And this guy does uh, videos, and he calls it my 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 new super cool uh, self defense class, my new my new super effective uh, yoga instruction class. So I like you should see these, like they're fucking like. It's one of those things where you look at it and it's like, it's not that it's, it's not just cringe. You almost feel like, you know, like I felt like a sense of melancholy because I was like, this poor guy is, is like making videos and putting them on the internet. And like, and some of them got like, you could see that like he got like a thousand or like a, a couple of thousand views on one of the videos. And oh my god, some of the comments, like, some of the comments were like, you know, what's this retard doing on the internet and all this shit. Like, real harsh stuff. Like, you know, stuff stuff you wouldn't actually say to someone of that mental capacity because, like, it's a horrible thing to do, you know? 
Um, because he does have that sense, that kind of like Down Syndrome-esque, like angelic innocence about him. Where he's like, he genuinely thinks he's doing these techniques and moves, like, right. And like, he's got like little, like, you know, the kind of weights that they give to girls, you know, like the little, like tiny things, like. And he's not like fit at all, like, you know, he's kind of pudgy. And like, he kind of looks like a big baby. You know, like his like his muscles aren't defined at all. He's got like man boobs and stuff like. So like he's clearly like not physically capable or mentally capable or anything like. But he's capable enough to like put the camera on and do stuff and fucking put it up on YouTube like. Um. And part of me was like there was comments that were saying like what I was thinking. I was like, do you know what? Fair play to the fucker. You know, God bless him. You know, God fucking bless him. Like. But it's like, how. How does his shit get like 3,000 views on one of his videos and like mine doesn't like like even if it was people just saying oh my god this fucking racist prick how can he the nerve of him saying nigger on YouTube like even if it was that do you know what I mean I'd welcome it I'd be like I'd be like oh well at least I'm making some headway you know like, and then I see this guy's videos and I was just like Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not even making the same kind of drop in the pebble of the pond as some fucking, like, poor unfortunate retard who thinks he's a fucking yoga master. <laughs> yeah, like, Corky, Corky the fucking yoga master, like, you know? That's so, like, but that, that's what, like, you know, I'm right, like, do you know what I mean? Because I was like, that is the reality that, like, you know, uh, it's like, that stuff is allowed to be like like the elf you know like the elf streams like like he's got like he's got like a couple of like a hundred subscribers or something and some of his videos have like you know a, a couple of hundred views or some shit like and then fair like most of his videos have low views like like mine but it's like he literally just sits in his fucking van and like talks about what shit his life is and stuff and fucking vegemite and shit like you know, like, and that's what I was saying the other day. Is like, was it yesterday? I like I genuinely do really understand uh, and relate to like how Owen feels because of like the reality of how like how fucking rigged and unfair all these systems are. Um, if you're trying to just be real about something. It's like it's like you're put into this dark corner of the internet or some shit where 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 dudes like that elf exist. <laughs> like, and like when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I like that. I like I like my little niche. I like that I have been like, you know, probably algorithmically segregated because what that means is I'm I'm doing I'm doing like the right thing. Because if YouTube was promoting the shit out of me, then that would mean I'm doing the wrong thing, you know? Um, but there is that, like... There's those feelings and those thoughts that go through your mind where you're like, This is fucking bullshit! <laughs> and, like, you can't help but think... It's like, this is so fucked, like... <laughs> in so many ways, like, it, it's, like, so fucking crazy, like... You'd have these fucking, like just utter shit that's like not entertaining it's like it's like disturbing you know and and then like propaganda and like and all this shit like and like it's just allowed to be there like porn like do you know what i mean it's like like porn is just allowed to exist you know even though they know how fucking utterly destructive and like degenerate it is and how like fucks with your head and all this stuff like and it just like sucks your soul out of you like and it's just it's like a multi-billion dollar industry like paid paid it's the same with pharmaceuticals like it's like for anyone who actually looks at the reality of this situation it's like these th these pills these medications like are like they you may as well just drink alcohol these things are poison they're not fucking medicine and uh and people are making money off a of hand over fist, like, you know? It's a, again, right, it was a, an example I seen, like, a few hours ago on my phone. 
I follow this guy called uh, Pirate Software or some shit. He's got uh, his uh, online moniker is Thor, um, and he's a he's a game developer. Really cool guy. Really really cool guy. He like he seems to be quite based, um, but because if he was in the because he's in the industry, uh, he's very tech savvy. So he really knows how to like make an impact in the algorithm and stuff like that. So he's become huge on YouTube. Um, but he's like totally against all this like toxic shit in the gaming industry and all this stuff like so he's after blowing up in the past few months like um and he was he was turning around he's like look this is how it is i spent two years over time working on starcraft 2 um and a glittered pony that was a mount that you could ride around um that was a purchasable microtransaction for $15 on World of Warcraft made more money than the game StarCraft 2 but let that sink in <laughs> like so you have all these people that work on a whole game they're doing crunch time they're doing overtime you know they're like people paying salaries like all this fucking like all of that money all of that effort all that labor all that creativity into a game and it makes X amount of money. And then another game comes along and puts in one microtransaction. Obviously, they put in many, but w the one microtransaction they put in that's like a fucking glittered pony uh, that you can fucking use as your mount or whatever like that. And they charge $15 for it. A digital asset in a game that you've already paid for. And it made more money for that game company than an entire other game. That's the kind of, like, that's the shit we're dealing with now. The... 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 Concept of what is valuable. Or what should be... Valued at certain prices and stuff like that. The concept of, like... Honorable... Business... Is long forgotten in the mainstream. <laughs> paid, paid. Um... I personally think he would grow faster on Rumble. Nothing on there like what you're doing. Man, you're probably right. Uh, in the, f I've only been doing it a while. And I don't do it like, you know, consistent, consistently. I'll, I'll do it when I remember. Or when uh, Sleep Deprived puts it up on Telegram. Um, I'm like, oh, I'll slap that up on Rumble. And like some of them, like one of them got like 55 views. You know? And, like, I've gotten a few likes and shit. Like, you're probably dead right, like, you know? Um, so maybe, like, I might I might start streaming on Rumble or something. Or, like, you know, I try, I'll, I try, ask Sleep Deprived to show me how he uh, digitally downloads them. He, like, you know, he, fucking these fucking nerds who know all these technical loopholes um, around shit and all, like, stuff to download to be able to give you access to other things. Like, you know... Um, He's able to pull my streams without having to, you know, pay for memberships or whatever like that, like, you know, and then upload them to Telegram. So, like, if I can learn how to do that myself uh, or find a workaround or whatever, or what I might do is, like, I might I might just fork out the 15 or 11 quid for a month of YouTube and then for a, a month solid download my streams and put them on Rumble, do it that way. Or I might just, like, you know, Monday I'll do YouTube. Tuesday I'll do Rumble, you know, fucking, but then that might be a pain in the hole for people who want to watch me. It's like, what day is it? What channel do I find them on? Like, you know, um, and I don't, I, I'm not a fan of the, like, uh, like, I really like the Interverse podcast, but what I don't like is when they, uh, put things behind paywalls. I, I think that's, I think that's a really cringy, dirty thing to do is like, uh, like, I get it, you're trying to make money, and, and, like, you know, you're trying to get people to support the stream, and then you can do this and so on and so forth. But, like, that's the stuff that makes me stop watching your stream, like, you know, because if you put up, like, if some of your videos are three hours long, and they're full of this esoteric knowledge, and they're really cool and all, and I'm going to be liking your videos and watching your videos, and then you turn around and you're like, oh, the first hour, like, Crow. Like, I, I haven't subscribed to Crow777 because I'm like, I've only got so much fucking money available to me you know 
like, paying a fiver for UA every month was, like, a bit of a stress for me. Like, I know that sounds mental, but, like, it is. It's reality, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I have no money in my bank account right now. And the internet costs 50 quid at the end of the month. So, like, that's my focus, is making sure I have at least 50 quid in my bank at the end of the month to cover costs that come out of my account at the end of the month. You know, like direct debit shit, like, you know. In between that, when I make money or somebody sends me money or somebody sends me a deposit or something like that, like, most of it I just give to the female. For, like, groceries, towards rent, towards anything, you know, just to, like, help and shit, like. Um, but the internet's in my name, so I have to make sure that I have at least 50 quid in my bank account to make sure the internet doesn't get turned off, you know. Um... So, like, even something that costs a fight... Like, I'm sure you guys completely relate to what I'm saying. Like, I mean, especially Stabaru, who works full-time job, has fucking kids and shit. Like, just because something only costs a fiver doesn't mean that, like, if it's, like, every fucking month, it doesn't, like, eventually make a little bit of a nick, you know, in, in shit. Like, you know, and I get charged six euro just to have a bank account. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like... Like, how fucking mad is that? That your bank charges you six quid a month to have an account with them. When all the, like, I just, uh, oh, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole concept of money to me is just such a demonic thing, like. Like, and I don't, I, like, I get where some people will make the, um, uh, the argument that, like, oh, well, it's not like hauling gold everywhere was like fucking uh, logistically viable, you know. So we had to come up with something that represented gold, you know. So that you could be like, this represents how much gold I have and blah, blah, and all this stuff. Like, But it's like, right there and then, you fucked up, like, in my opinion. All the, like, bearer bonds and all this fucking shit. Like, it's paper. It's a bit of paper with ink on it. It may represent something, but it is not the thing that it represents. So, it's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you may as well just be handing somebody an IOU. Like, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Like, but because of the convenience of it, they've gotten away with it. Because retards, like, retards are like, oh yeah, this is a great idea. This is so convenient. Retards. Not a brain cell in their fucking body, like. That, like the the saying "convenience is death." Like I remember the first time I heard that, I was like, "Oh my god, that's so fucking true." Everything from fast food to money. This is fucking demonic. Like, I remember I used to fucking, uh, when I was working in one of the warehouses, I remember having this hilarious conversation with them. Because they all thought I was fucking crazy. I was like, we don't need money. Like, money is, like, evil. Um, the world would be better off if we didn't, like, use money and people, like, didn't, you know, uh, if people weren't motivated by making as much money as possible and all this fucking stuff like and i remember the assistant manager turned around to me like like i was a retard and he was like uh he was like the world the world runs on money like money makes the world go around like what do like what, what would we do if we didn't have money and i was like like what do you mean what would what so money's always existed like the world like, society will collapse if money goes away. So, like, trade and barter and, like, stuff like that never existed. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I remember looking at, like, he's looking at me like I'm a retard. And I was looking at him and being like, oh, my God, you are a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, if you don't understand that basic concept, like, and none of them did. None of them did, like, do you know what I mean? Like, 20 years older than me with kids and all, like, do you know what I mean? And, like, I know that's not a good metric for intellect or whatever, but, like, it's just, uh, like, that repeatedly shocked me throughout my life where I was like, I'm a teenage stoner. Paint, paint. And 
I understand reality and existence more than these people. And these people are responsible for other people's lives. Paint, paint. Like those, th when I when I would think these things true, I would like they would like really fuck with me. They would like traumatize me to a level where I'm like, the whole fucking world is run by fucking idiots. And if they're not idiots, they're psychopaths. You know, because of like, if you're not an idiot and you have the you, you do have a modicum of intellect. Well, if you're doing, if you're behaving in that manner, and if you're convincing everybody that they have to live this way, then you have literally used your intellect for immoral things, and you've like fucked over your fellow man and like done horrific shit, all in the name of profit. And like, it's so profound when you say it like that, and you know, like you know the, like all in the name of profit. You know, and you could, you could go even further and be like, <clears throat> they do it all in the name of the profit. Because the profit is the money they make, you know, the profit that they make. And then you use the other spelling of that word and it, in, instead of P-R-O-F-I-T, it's P-R-O-P-H-E-T. And it's like, they're doing it for the profit, but they're like, but their profit is Satan and I'm not saying my prophet is Jesus because he's not like I'm fucking like I'm not a Christian I don't believe I don't adhere to any known religion you know I don't like any like I'm I'm not a pagan you know I would be more pagan than a Christian probably in many ways but then again I could be fair like I, I like some of the old school Christian shit like you know Deus Vult um but it's just it's just mine it was always mind blowing to me that like uh, like I, I just I'd be left standing there being like, like, in, I should be, I should be the retard. Do you know what I mean? Like, I should be the fucking stupid one. Like, I'm fucking, like, high all the time, playing video games. You know, like, I come from a fucking divorced, traumatized family. I'm a teenager. And, like, I get existence more than these people with steady pay, <coughs> steady jobs. Uh, families like you know all this all this fucking shit I'm like you have children you're responsible for another human being's life and you are a fucking bell end like you you are an idiot you know and like and that's one of the reasons why I love Vox so much is he's just like accepted the reality like like the level of intellect that chap possesses is fucking like, kind of intimidating, like, do you know what I mean? Because he's just like, but they're idiots, you know? Like, you know, and like, people to, oh, what an arrogant asshole. It's like, no, he really isn't. Like, most people are actually the arrogant assholes because they don't have the self-awareness and intellect to realize that they're idiots, you know? So, at least he's just being honest and telling the truth of the matter, that most people are idiots. <laughs> at least now, anyway, like. It's fucking mind blowing to me, like. Magic, go go. Yeah, trim me mustache. When I get to when I get to the stage where like I can feel it curling inwards, and I start I start eating it inadvertently. <laughs> Paint, paint. Nazis. Paint, paint. To make more of this flesh color. Paint, paint. Fleisch. Paint, paint. Man, I fucking love the German language. Paint, paint. It's a. It's really. It's a. It's like in. It's. It's a nice experience to. To speak it. It has a really nice like cadence and rhythm to it and stuff and nice sounds and shit. Man, I'd love to be able to speak Arabic. Arabic's a beautiful language when you hear it spoken. Paid, paid.
I think it's like it, it's you, you're far more likely to learn a language uh, efficiently and quickly in like a reasonable amount of time um, if you just go to the place and surround yourself you know like just just dive in because that's how I learned Irish which is hilarious because it's like literally my national language <laughs> but like it isn't <laughs> I always thought, like, growing up, I always thought that was funny. I was like, we're Irish. Yeah. But everybody speaks English. Yeah. 400 years of fucking, like, you know, rape and murder and oppression. and They colonized us and blah, blah, blah. It's like, so what? But they're gone now. Yeah, they've been gone a while now. Yeah, yeah. But we still speak English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, like, I didn't, I didn't know any Irish, really. Like, I knew fuck all. Very limited Irish. Um, and then... I, uh, and then I went to an Irish secondary school. And you literally got penalised. You would get detention if you, if you spoke English. Like, they took it really seriously. Sometimes too fucking seriously, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I got where they were coming from. Um, they were attempting to keep the culture and the language and the history and all that shit alive, which I completely agree with. Um, but it was it was very it was very difficult, very stressful. Admittedly, it would not it would not have been anywhere near as stressful if my parents weren't getting divorced at that time. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was constantly freaking out and under a lot of stress and fucking uh, and like occasionally just like bursting into tears because because my family was falling apart and then i was going into school and then everybody was like oh well should figure fucking you know like oh tom like you know tom which couldn't yeah innovation and all that and i'm just like uh uh <laughs> like paint <laughs> and like some of the some of the some of the kids were pure dickheads about it like it would turn around to me and be like you're an idiot. Like, what are you doing here? Like, this is an Irish school. If you don't have any Irish, why did you come here? That's such... Like, that's stupid. And I'm just standing there being like... Because uh, you get more points for doing your leaving certain Irish. And I thought it would be a good way to, like... Learn Irish. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like... Pay, pay. <laughs> but it was... Like, it's, it's definitely something I don't regret. Even though, like, I'm a... Uh, Neelum, uh, Neelum, uh, Neelum Leafa Ahilla Osquelga, uh, which means uh, I'm no longer fluent in Irish. I hope, anyway. <laughs> it's probably some fucking expert that'd be like, actually, um, I'm not, I'm not fluent anymore. Um, not at all, at all. Um, but I still, I still have enough that I can like, I can understand it when it's spoken, and I remember most of it and stuff. And yeah, I don't, I don't regret it at all. Like, I think it was, I think it was definitely the right thing to do, despite how much of a pain in the hole it was. Uh, but it, it actually gave me an incredible amount of confidence in my, in my own intellect, uh, because I had the teacher, the teachers were really impressed with me, because like three months in, and they were like, he's, he's getting it, like, <laughs> like he's gone from having no Irish to like getting C's and B's in an Irish school like, you know, like and then I'd be getting like A's in English you know and some of the some of the history classes I'd get like B pluses in and stuff because like I, I liked history and I was good at history so I just had to like translate everything god that was a pain in the hole I used to have like I used to have the English textbook and the Irish textbook and I'd have to be like switching between them and shit like it was fucking crazy like um there was so many times where I'd be doing my homework and I'd just break down in tears from the stress of it all, like... Um... But, like, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to, um... What would be... What's the word? I'm not, I'm not going to, uh... Sub subscribe the... All, all of the stress just to the school and trying to learn Irish, because it wasn't. I was, I was going through a lot. So it just... It exacerbated. It increased dramatically. Uh, the amount of stress that I was under already. Um, so if I'd have had like a normal family structure, probably would have been fine, you know. Um, 
but that was the unfortunate reality of the situation was I was under an incredible amount of stress at the time because my father was leaving and they were getting separated and all and meanwhile I was trying to learn a fucking <laughs> a language while trying to go to school <laughs> you know, like try, trying to learn the language to be able to do the school work <laughs> as if school wasn't stressful enough in itself <laughs> like I was fucking like Anytime I think back on that, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like, I'm such a stubborn little prick sometimes, <laughs> you know, like, like, I'll bitch and I'll moan, but I'll fucking do it, like, you know, like, I'll, like, slam my head against the wall till I'm bleeding, like, but I'm like, I will do this, <laughs> like, and it's a, it's, it's a double-edged sword quality to a personality, I'll tell you that much, like, because some people turn around to me and they're like, you know, fair play to you or whatever or like you know fucking jesus you know not many people would be able to do that or like you know certain things i've done in my life or creatively or intellectually or some things it's like jesus like you're really talented or like you have you're pretty smart not like you know and i'm always just standing there looking at them going it comes at a cost <laughs> like it's like sometimes it genuinely feels like a curse and not a blessing like <laughs> Like, I used to, I, I've said that many a time in the past where, like, uh, I'd be going through a stressful time or some shit or I'd be dealing with something. Or, like, something would be going on in the world and, like, all your friends are talking about it and stuff and all, like. And I, I'd always be sitting there, well, not always, but I'd often be sitting there being like, God, I wish I was retarded. Ignorance is bliss. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I get those moments where I'm like, oh, why couldn't I have been born stupid? <laughs> Like, I wouldn't care about any of this crap, you know, like... Because <clears throat> when, you when you're aware, when you, have the, when you have the capacity to comprehend things, and you're aware of things and all, like... And you have empathy and compassion. It's a sometimes a horrific combo, you know, because you wish you could just not know shit, like, you know? <laughs> That's why when some people get red-pilled, they just fucking break, you know? <laughs> They're like... What? This is what real life is like? It's like, yeah, no, yeah, like, or organ harvesting, you know, fucking, <laughs> like, really dark shit, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, and they're just like, they're just like, they're just, they, they, they get reduced to just be like, <laughs> like, it's like, have a cigarette, relax, <laughs> just breathe. Ugh. But like when I when I look at that shit, when I look at all of it in like a when I look at all of it together, the conclusion I come to, at least uh, I suppose on a spiritual level, is that the reason why I was put through like a fair amount of trauma in my early years um, was so that when I grew up and like stuff like all of this like woke shit started happening and like political uh, correctness and then fucking COVID a few years ago. It was like water off a duck's back to me. <laughs> you know, like... Like, I genuinely couldn't believe that, like, the kind of, like, rough and tumble, uh, you know, kind of... Not scumbags, but, like, lower economic, you know, status uh, friends that I had at the time. You know, fucking anti-authoritarian, you know, like, you know, fucking nobody could tell me to do shit, do what I want. Like, you know, fucking... Like, not tough guys, but, like, you know... Damaged, you know, like, da damaged, scarred, like, been through some shit, like, you know, fucking... And then COVID came along, and, like, you know, they, I don't think, like, they all got vaccinated, but they were fucking wearing the masks. And I was just sitting there looking at them, and I was like... What happened to... Like, where'd all your ego go? <laughs> you know, like... You know, like... Where'd all of this, like, you know... I'd fucking bait you, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, fucking... Like, I'll take on any man. Like, it's like, where's that now? You know? You can't even walk into the shop without, you know, uh, doing what you're told, you know? And, like, I just thought it was crazy. Like, I didn't, I genuinely didn't think I, I would be the only one that I knew of in my environment. And I practically was. I, I practically was the only one who said no to the whole thing 
and like stuck to my guns and walked in and out of shops and was like, yeah, fuck this. Like, what are you going to do? Make me do it? Fucking make me do it. Go on. Try and make me do it. Like, and everyone was like, oh, he's one of them. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just like had this moment of self-realization where I was like, shit, I didn't, I didn't think I was like that. <laughs> you know, like, like I kind of did, but not really, like, not to that degree, like. And then there was a moment where I was like, fuck, like, you know, that profound loneliness, you know, that profound sense of loneliness when, like, your family and your friends are all just like, they're all just like, yes, master, Do you know, they're, well, they're either like that or they're like, oh, well, I have to, you know, they're like, they're kind of trying to, they're trying to stand there with their arms folded, still looking kind of tough, being like, well, you know, you just, you have to, you have to, you just, you just have to, you know, you, you do it to, to get along, you know, just, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta give in at some point to certain things. Like the whole fucking Joe Rogan, what Joe Rogan tried to do to Owen, you know, just like, just, just bet, just take the knee now so that you don't have to take the knee later. It's like, no, the second I take the knee, it's all gone. And the fact that you don't know that means that I know who you really are now, you know? Well, not who, but what, you know? A lot of people, a lot of people, like, you looked at them and, you, like, you looked at them and you were like, oh, shit, I know what you are now. Fuck. <laughs> like, mad shit, like. The kind of people that always spoke about, like, you know, oh, what would you do in a zombie apocalypse and, like, and all this stuff and all, like, and, well, we fucking know now. <laughs> we fucking know now. It's like that, it's like that bit of the Michelin web look. It's like, now we know. <laughs> like, now we know. It's like, what? What do you know? Like, now we know. <laughs> Man, Mitch, Mitch and Web look is fucking funny. <laughs> Hans, are we the bad guys? <laughs> like, I really like the Mitchell and Web look. It's a hilarious show. But, like, when I go back and watch it now... Like, I've done it recently enough where I went back and watched it now. And I was like, oh my god. Like, like... When I watched it the first time, there was that kind of, like, mm, there's an element of, like, patheticness to this, like, do you know what I mean? You know, which I know is kind of, like, one of the kind of points of the show is to, like, display how pathetic people can be. Um, but when, the, when I went back and watched it more recently after, like, all the COVID stuff and, like, you know, going through all the truth or shit and all this stuff, like, and uh, coming to some realizations... Um, and then also seeing uh, David Mitchell um, I think he was on a show well, I think was he on the Graham Norton show or some shit and he was like you know a, a sense, a, essentially peddling the whole science narrative well it's like if you believe the earth is flat you are fucking retarded like you know and like in a literal sense, yes, you know, if you genuinely believe that the whole realm is just like a flat surface floating through an abyss or something, yeah, you're pretty thick. But like, to just utterly disregard a another concept of reality, another way of uh, perceiving reality to be a certain way, is not only profoundly arrogant, but retarded. You know, because, like, if, if you even have a moderate intellect, you realize that, like, you can look at anything from multiple perceptions. And depending on what perception you look at it from, the truth of the matter from that perception could completely contradict the truth of the matter from a different perception. Because you're only looking from that point of view. So the intellectual and wise thing to do is look at things from all perspectives in order to glean the most accurate truth. You know? See it from all sides. 
I'll, ne I'll never forget. It was, it was a religious, it was a religion teacher um, who taught me that. A, like a morbidly obese female <laughs> in, a, in a religion class who taught me that. She picked up the... She picked up the the blackboard duster, you know the thing the the thing you use to wipe the blackboard with, with the chalk duster or whatever, and she picked it up and she was like, "Everyone, if I hold this up and you all look at it, because you're all sitting in different points of the room, you're all gonna see it from a different angle. And if I turn it like this, everyone on that side of the room isn't going to know or be able to see that." the material on this side of the item is completely different. It's like, you know, furry and felt and like a fabric on this side and it's like wood on the other. You know, so if I hold it like this, you know, you are all going to see the same thing. If I hold it like this, half of you are going to see something completely different. Like, and I remember, and she's saying all of this in Irish. <laughs> or did she? I think she might have actually said all that in English. There was a few things she did in English to like make sure that everybody got it. I remember that. I was like, I mean, that's cool. Um, but I, I remember being in the class and she did that. And uh, like, she, she said all that and, uh, and gave that example. And I was just like, that is so fucking true. Like, that's so true. Like, and um, it was one of those fundamental things that I like, literally, like, it's like seared into my mind. That like screenshot in my head of being like where I was sitting in the class looking at her and all that. And it's so fucking true, you know? Because, like, even when you look at something that, like, uh, on the face of it is, like... Oh, well, it's... It's probably just this. Like, you look at fucking, like, you know, the Communist Party of China and how China's run and all this stuff. Paint, paint. Um... There's, there's almost assuredly, like, you know, an angle <clears throat> that you could look at it from... Apart from the communist angle, obviously, you know, like, there's there's bound to be a few angles that you could look at that from. I'd be like, no, yeah, I totally get where they're coming from. And like, the other angles are like, oh my god, they're like horrific psychopaths, and like, what? A, how could anyone live in a dystopian hellscape like that? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, well, if their population is in the hundreds of fucking millions or billions or whatever, it's not like like the Chinese Communist Party doesn't stop Chinese people from leaving the country. Now, don't get me wrong. From what I've heard, I know they stop certain people from leaving the country. You know, like the Weigers or whatever, like, or or people who are really low on that social credit score system or some shit, like, you know? You're, you're not even allowed to take a train, let alone a fucking plane. Um, But it, then how did... How do we have Chinese people in other countries then? Like, do you know what I mean? And, like, it's just... It's it's always it's almost always the case where it's like you'll hear shit about America and you'll be like, Oh my god, like, you know, so they're all fat and stupid. Not true, they're not all fat and stupid. And then you hear stuff about Ireland and it's like, Oh, they're all like Do all sound like this, I and they always have a fucking ladder and a pig and they're always like, you know, fucking drinking Guinness and fucking Not true, you know? And you look at the English and it's like, Oh, they're all ugly and they have horrible teeth. Not true. You know, fucking, like, the list goes on and on. It's like, yes, some stereotypes are true. But then there's, like, loads of other stuff that you hear all the time that is, like, genuinely fucking, like, you could describe it, you could define it as straight-up propaganda because it's so not true, you know? It's just like, oh, the, the flip-flop nature of truth in this timeline is fucking crazy and like and that's why a community like this and streams like Owen's stream and stuff like that are so fucking important you know it's like you need people to just have that uh there's a vibration there's a frequency to truth you know you can tell when somebody's just being real with you like and uh there's not enough of it there's not enough of it these days it's like a it's like a rare commodity it may as well be the fucking spiritual equivalent of fucking gold, like. Painting, goo goo goo, goo goo. It's not dark enough. I always thought those purchasable, purchasable mounts were gay and cringe. I'd rather grind for the mounts I had. Yeah, like I like most most people with a fucking brain, um, 
abhor mi microtransactions. You know, gone are the days for the most part. There are still some game developer game developing companies that adhere to those rules, um, but like most mostly it's gone. Um, gone are the days where you bought a game, the game came in a case, it came in a disc, it came in a manual, and then you're playing the game after reading the manual. You know how to play the game because you've read the manual. Or like, you know, the rear of the case even sometimes. And you uh, you play the game, you complete the game, and when you complete the game, you unlock something. Or even before you complete the game, you like do something in during the game, the, 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 prog the progress of the game, and you do something in particular. And it's like, you now have unlocked this mode. You now have unlocked this weapon. You now have unlocked this character. You know? Fucking Tekken used to do that all the time. There would be characters off screen. You'd have the roster of all the characters on the screen. Fucking Tekken... Uh, Street Fighter do it? I think, yeah, Street Fighter did it. Uh, think Mortal Kombat did it. I'm not... Like, it used to be a thing, in uh, especially in, fi uh, in uh, fighting games, where there would be characters that you unlocked on the roster. And then there would also be secret characters that you couldn't see. And stuff like that or they'd be like you know an extra slot would be put in when you did it on hard mode or something like you know um capcom is actually a great example uh of it back then not so much now um not really at all now i think but uh, capcom used to do great stuff like resident evil 2 not that i i actually didn't play it when it came out um the remake's really cool though but my uh an old friend uh, like a my former best friend uh, used to regularly, um, uh, what would it be the word? Uh, re regularly, like um, talk, I suppose, about how like he w he would regularly mention because we'd be playing games and he'd be like, "Oh man, like it's games like this are so shit. Like games are so shit these days." I remember uh, Resident Evil Two. You, you you completed Resident Evil Two, and when you completed Resident Evil Two, you got what something what that was called Scenario B, which was res the whole game from a different perspective because you were playing as a different character. You know, and like you just don't see shit like that th these days. You know, like DLC is the name of the game, where it's like, okay, you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay sixty nine ninety nine for a game that has content in it that is locked, unless you pay more money. Because that, that's how it's done, you know? When a game comes out, uh, particularly from a crowd call, uh, you know, like a Ubisoft or EA or something, right? A game will come out, and you can pre-order the game, right? If you pre-order the game, you'll get extra stuff. So, like, and then there's not just pre-orders, there's also, like, different versions, you know? So there's, like, the standard edition, which is just the game, right? But if you... Uh, like what what game came out there the other day i can't remember is it like star wars outlaws or something i'm not sure but basically like you could pay 69.99 which is expensive enough as it is for the base game right which isn't actually the base game what it is actually is a uh locked off version it is it is like a a a diluted version of the actual game because the actual game costs 135 euro because when you look at it they're like oh yeah you can pay 69.99 for the standard edition or you can get the hardcore edition which is like 110 euro or you can get the gold ultimate edition the premium edition for 175 euro or something like you know crazy money especially when you don't even get a case or a disc or a manual it's all digital all of it and you just spent like upwards of fucking 150 quid or some shit on zeros and ones right whereas like someone who just pays 69.99 gets like a watered down version of the game and they call it oh the standard edition it's not the fucking standard it's watered down you've locked like you've created you've created a game that f that as far as you guys are concerned is worth 175 fucking euro and it has all this extra fucking shit in it that all games used to put in them anyway you just had to unlock it by playing the game it's fucking like it like forget jew behavior forget that jewy fuckery behavior it's straight up demonic 
some of the stuff that's going on in the gaming industry. It's straight up fucking demonic. It's fucking disgusting. Painting goo 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 goo. Painting goo 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 goo. Oh, oh, glorious Kepo. My ass is now numb. And I'm five minutes over. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm liking how the... I, I'm, I like how I place the Nazis. The Nazis... I was kind of afraid because of how the... Not afraid. I'm not a bitch. I was concerned um, that the angle I had placed the bow at wouldn't give me a lot of uh, room to work with to place the Nazis... In um in satisfactory locations and ways, but uh, I'm I'm quite satisfied, especially with this nigga on the minigun. I think that fits well. So I'm gonna give this guy uh, on Monday when I return. I shall give this guy the STG 44. It's one of my favorite German assault rifles. It was the first German assault rifle, wasn't it? The STG 44. Correct me if I'm wrong. Man, the Germans knew how to make guns. Everything from the MP40, the Car 98K, to the SDG44, to the Luger pistol, to the fucking epic weapons. Really, really epic weapons. And that's not to dis that's not to say, you know, that the Americans didn't have awesome weapons too. I mean, there's a reason why all the Mafia fucking heads were using Tommy guns and stuff like that. And the M1 Garand is an iconic rifle. It's always the Springfield bolt action sniper rifle. How funny would it be if I just ended up doing a fucking gun nut stream? <laughs> Because like, uh, there's lots of stuff I don't know that I'd love to know. Because I am a bit of a gun nut. Bah, that's not true. It would be true if uh, guns were like legal here and I could collect them quite easily. I'd definitely be a gun nut. You can be, you can be uh, damn sure that I'd have like a fucking uh, desert eagle sitting in a drawer somewhere or some shit. Yeah, the Sturmgewehr. Um, the Goer, the, the Gewehr, the fucking, the basic just Goer, uh, the semi-automatic um, rifle is a, another excellent weapon. Um, I'm trying to think of a German weapon that I don't like uh, from World War Two. Yeah, I, can't, I genuinely can't think of a, like even their fucking anti-tank weapons and all, the Panzerschfaust. The Panzerfaust, um, like their Carnegie AK, great sniper rifle, MP40, great machine gun, STG, great assault rifle, Luger, great pistol. Like the, the amount of Americans that like collect the German weapons and stuff because they like they appreciate the engineering, like you know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we are broke, Japanese brother. Indeed, indeed, we are all we are all kind of broke. Uh, but that's probably going to change. I, I have a feeling uh, that the pendulum is swinging. Ge uh, genuinely. Things are changing. Things are turning. Um, and it's probably going to be slow. And it's probably going to be painful. But it's going to be worth it. Um, I think over the next 10, 20 years, you're going to see some awesome stuff. Some really epic, awesome, really heartwarming, really like, you know, spiritually uplifting shit. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to also see some fucking, like, maniacal death throws from Clown World that are going to produce all sorts of madness. Um, but it's nothing we can't handle, you know? All we have to do is sit back, enjoy the ride, and remember, 
to take the piss. Uh, I agree. I like having it, but I hate money and the concept of it. Um, yeah, like I like money means nothing to me. Like, do you know what I mean? Like a fucking, like yeah, sure. Like I like having it because then I can do stuff. Um, but how crazy is it to say that? I mean, you should just be able to do stuff. You know, it's mad. Like, I mean, like it's just ugh, yeah. I'm not going on another rant, but like y'all, y'all know where I stand because you probably stand in a similar position. Um, wie geht's es dir? Uh, ich, 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 ich geht's gut. Is that how you said it? Wie geht's? Wie geht's, mein Lieben? Ich gehen gut. Or ich, ich bin gut. You just say ich bin gut. Ich ist gut. <laughs> it's probably grammatically horribly wrong. Like, what was the thing I used to say all the time? Uh, I used to love how, oh, you say, how you say, I don't know. Ich weiß nicht. Ich weiß nicht. <laughs> or just like, scheiße. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody, like, fucking loads of people know about scheiße. Like, scheiße! Like, it's a great fucking... That's another thing. Like, you know, like, uh, some languages are just, like, epic to, like, uh, to curse in. Like, I love that scene in The Matrix Reloaded where they, mis they, uh, they visit the Merovingian, the French fella. And he's like, uh... I have sampled all the languages, and French is my favorite. French is the only language that uh, you can curse with, and it sounds beautiful. And he says a lot of fucking shit in French, and then he goes, it's like wiping your ass with silk. I, I fucking love that scene. I love that scene. So I love that character. The Merovingian is, like, fucking hilarious. He's so cool. Like, in a... You know, like, you respect him, but, like, he's a fucking asshole and, like, a dirtbag. He's, like, cheating on his missus, like, and and all that stuff. Lord. But, like, he has this, like, incredible charisma and he's, like, really intelligent and shit. Like, but he's also not intelligent because of, uh, because of how much his voices control him. He's just, he's a really, really well-written character. The Merovingian out of uh, The Matrix Reloaded, the second movie. It's fucking brilliant. Like, like I love it. I, there's, there's, like, a just one a one line out of him where uh the bit where persephone betrays him and uh and leaves the room and neo's like you know uh you get the you get the key maker out of here I'll, I'll handle these and he's like you'll handle us your your kind will always have always been so profoundly arrogant and then he like clicks his fingers and all the fucking vampire lads tried to kill uh, Neo and shit. And then the second Neo slams the blade in the last one's head, it just cuts to the Merovingian and he's just like, God damn it, woman, you will be the end of me. That's <laughs> like, I like, that's actually one of my favorite things about the Matrix uh, 1 and 2. Not so much 3. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the third one. But the first two movies... The fucking... Whoever wrote the dialogue, man. Like, the fucking dialogue. Like, people's lines in those movies are fucking epic. Like, you know? I know Kung Fu. Show me. <laughs> like, I fucking love it. Deutsche ist der Beste. Das Beste. Ja, ja. Ich liebe Deutsche. Es ist ein sehr guten... Tanga? Or is that... Am I fucking mixing up Irish and English now? How do you say how do you say language in German? Can't remember. Uh, I got to I go, I go to a German deli every month and try to brush up on my German. So great. Oh man, I'd say that's hilarious crack. I'd say that's fucking Guten Guten Abend mein uh, mein Freunden. Wie geht's? Uh fucking Was was uh, was will in die haben? Today, I can't even remember what today is. Like, my German, like, meine Deutsch is sehr schlecht. Ich habe, ich habe kleine bisschen Deutsch. And that kleine bisschen is schlecht. Uh, aber ich liebe Deutsch. Es ist ein sehr guten language. Uh, used to watch Little Britain. Looking back, it was for sure both uh, taking a piss whilst pre program Yeah, like, Little Britain was fucking hilarious. And the com computer says, no. <laughs> Like, like again, like some of the characters in that, like just the little moments, the bits, like they're really well written and they're very real and they're really true. Um, 
but yeah there was like there was even propaganda in that shit and all like you know it's the same with the Mitchell and Webb look there was a lot of like when 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 comedy slips in the acceptance of degeneracy that's like I fucking hate that you know you should be taking the piss out of it you should you should be mocking it you should be mocking weakness you should be mocking uh, fucked up ideology and all this stuff like you know but like Mitchell and Webb look and Little Britain there was moments where you saw that they were actually accepting of the fuck, fucked up world that we were about to experience um, Panzer Shrek influenced the creation of the bazooka but I go I could go on about all that nerdy shit do you know like like sometimes I do want to do that like you know in a way Griff wanted to come on the stream and shit like uh, sometimes I want to do just a stream where it's just me chilling and like I'll get you guys on and we'll just talk about shit that we like kind of like a hanging with bears but like on a different timeline because like I never get to watch like I never get to watch Owen live except on the weekends and I never get to watch hanging with the bears and stuff like that because it's always on so late you know and I don't like I fucking I I can't do what stuntman bear and like people like Vox do like I'm I can be a night owl and I can stay up all hours and stuff like that like but I I love the morning too much I like a genuinely and it's it's partly because of this stuff like there is something about painting in natural sunlight um seeing my creations you know formed in natural sunlight is like it's much more satisfying to me I'm like I can paint at like four o'clock in the morning I can create at like four and four o'clock in the morning but the synthetic light um being projected on on all the colors and hues and stuff like that like i i much prefer getting up at like seven o'clock in the morning getting a workout in going for a walk getting some food into me and then creating uh cute awesome cool beautiful stuff um so unfortunately as a result of that uh i don't get to interact with the bear community as much as i would like um i.e. watching hanging with bears and being in the instagram chats and stuff like that like uh so that was actually one of the reasons you know like fucking bear banter and stuff like that that was the main reason why bear banter was created it was for the the guys on this side of the pond who are on a different uh time slot so maybe i'll just do that maybe i'll try and just do bear banter more often um because people like the bear banters and and so do i but it's just it's it's hard to do both uh but we'll see what happens anyway this concludes today's painting goo so i hope you enjoyed ingo and i will see you all again monday same time same pressure same high octane painting energy so in the meantime enjoy your weekend be good be true and be beautiful and i will see you monday 3 p.m gmt paddy bug irish timer be there or you will dishonor yourself and your family. Right. So, from me and all the Painting Goo family, Brother Garlos reminds you to like and subscribe to Painting Goo, or I will remove his aluminium bucket and fring him at you. And nobody wants to have a giant Siberian 850 pound, formerly addicted to cocaine, tiger frung at them. Tobias Beekus Kroos, keeper of the Ding Dongu and Miniberu, purveyor of the Mapu. From all of us here at Paintingu, I bid you farewell. That will see you Monday. Much love and God bless you are indeed, Desmondu. Farewell, my beloved Japanites, foreign dogs, ladies, gentlemen, niggers, niggerettes, all of you. <laughs>